Genetic engineering is also called genetic modification or GM. This is the term given to the technology that involves moving bits of genetic material uh, from one species to another or from the same species. Every creature is made up of DNA with each cell carrying a full set of genes carried in strands called chromosomes. When new cells are replicated, characteristics are passed on. Breeders of plants and animals have long been playing with DNA by breeding carefully selected specimens with each other. Genetic engineering takes this a step further by altering the DNA itself. Genetic diseases affect large amounts of people, for instance cystic fibrosis and muscular dystrophy. Other diseases, such as diabetes, are also treated using genetically modified organisms, like yeast. It's hoped that by finding out all the genes that humans are made of, scientists will be able to control them. One form of genetic engineering is cloning. This is where you make an exact genetic copy of something else. For instance, you could make an exact genetic copy of an animal. If they have particularly good features for food, you could make an exact genetic copy of plants, but you can also replicate particular cells, such as stem cells. Stem cells are particularly important. You find them in embryos, and these are actually cells that you can take out, and they can become any type of cell. For instance, you can turn them into a heart cell or a lung cell, and this can have extreme use in terms of making organ transplants. This is controversial, however, because they're usually found in embryos. Once they have been taken out, the stem cells, the embryos are then destroyed. So anyone who believes that life begins at conception, the moment when the sperm fertilises the egg, would argue that this constitutes murder. Another thing that can be done, using some of the technology we've already discussed, are genetically modified crops. These could be made resistant so that they can cope in areas where there isn't much rain, for instance, or where it's difficult for plants to normally grow. And the same thing can be done with animals. You can make animals that are resistant to certain things, or, as is now being tried out, animals that do incredibly weird things. For instance, there's a sheep that has spider web or silk that grows in its milk. You can also get cows now, which have been made so that they contain some human blood inside them and can be used for transfusions. A final thing you can do is genetic screening of embryos. This is where embryos are created in a test tube through IVF and they're then screened to see if they have particular traits. For instance, if you knew that you had muscular dystrophy in your family or another type of genetic disease, what you might want to do is screen the embryos after using IVF and then destroy any that have the gene that you don't want. Embryos that don't have this gene are then implanted back into the woman so that they can grow to be a full fetus. Within these scientific methods, then, cloning techniques may be used, uh, for instance, Dolly the sheep, and reproductive cloning can also be used to create an animal or part with identical genetic makeup to each other. Therapeutic cloning, as I've said, can also be used to clone embryos for research. Stem cell research is the most recent form of genetic therapy. And since stem cells are the building blocks of life and can be used to create or clone new organs or replace disease cells, they are harvested from test tube embryos, bone marrow or blood, and have been legal in the UK since 2001 for health reasons. One successful attempt has also been the engineering of a pig to produce human insulin that can be used to treat diabetes. It's also possible to create human hearts that grow inside pigs or sheep that could be then used for transplants. Genetically modified foods are also being used. For example, the flava sava tomato has been modified to prevent bruising and to help it grow quickly, avoiding the need for pesticides. This suggests that there are definite benefits in, uh, for genetic engineering. However, people strongly disagree about the use of genetic engineering. On the one hand, God gave humans dominion, which means power over the world. This was in the story of Genesis, where he says this to Adam and Eve, rule over every living thing. It could also be argued that Jesus healed people, which suggests that doctors should be allowed to do the same thing. The golden rule and the concept of agape love can also be applied. If genetic engineering is used to help people, it could be argued that it's the most loving thing, or we could say that you would like it yourself and therefore you should treat others as you wish to be treated. Finally, you can say that God gave us the gift of knowledge, which we can use to help people, e.g. insulin for diabetics or gene therapy for disorders. On the other hand, nature is complex and we don't know what the long-term effects will be. Once you've changed the genes or the structure of humanity, it's not possible to change it back. There's also an argument that it could be used for eugenics. 
This is what Hitler did, but without genetic engineering, where you control a race or certain genetic traits by eliminating them completely. Imagine if Hitler had been able to get hold of genetic engineering. Religious arguments include the idea that life is sacred and created by God. Since people, according to Christians, were made in God's image, it can be argued that they're sacred and made as God wanted them to be. Another good quotation you could remember from the Bible is who can straighten what God has made crooked, suggesting that we shouldn't be messing with what God has created. As I've already said, some Christians believe life begins at conception. In the Roman Catholic Catechism, for instance, it says that where embryos are destroyed, it constitutes murder because life is fully formed or at least needs to be respected as full life from the moment of conception. If you're asked about genetic engineering, you must read the question carefully. Is it asking you about why genetic engineering is important, in which case you should explain all the benefits? Is it asking you why people in general disagree about it or find it controversial, in which case you should discuss the issues on either side of the debate? Or is it asking you about Christian attitudes, in which case you should discuss the religious arguments on either side of this difficult issue? Remember to think about your examples as well. If it asks you about stem cell research or cloning, be sure to only include relevant examples for this section of the topic.